Should students be allowed to use ChatGPT to write their school essays? And what about teachers using AI chatbots to generate lesson plans? I'm Samantha Johnson, this is Digital Dilemma, and in today's episode, we'll discuss the use of artificial intelligence for students and educators in classrooms. class, you can even ask ChatGPT to solve an equation or do basic calculus. Soon after ChatGPT launched in November 2022, New York City Public Schools, the largest school district in the US, banned access to it on school devices and networks due to concerns over cheating. ChatGPT was placed on the list of restricted websites like YouTube, Netflix and Roblox. Several months later, the ban was reversed and the Chancellor of New York City Public Schools David C. Banks wrote in an op-ed, the knee-jerk fear and risk overlooked the potential of generative AI to support students and teachers, as well as the reality that our students are participating in and will work in a world where understanding generative AI is crucial. One of the people who applauded this decision was Hardy Potovi, co-founder of the US-based education nonprofit Code.org that advocates for greater access to computer science education in schools. The school system itself has a responsibility to teach the technology of the future, just as it has been teaching the curriculum of the past. So much of the education system of the last 200 years was built around the industrial model of preparing students for factory work and it's a, it involves memorization and rote repetition. And work that involves rote, repetitive practice is going to be the work that gets automated the fastest. Hardy helped launch Teach AI, an initiative that brings together technology and education companies, along with governmental education agencies, to rethink school learning in the age of AI. We spoke to Kaywin Cottle, a computer science teacher in rural Idaho, where most people work in ranching and agriculture. At her Title I public middle school, many are migrant students, half are Hispanic, and most of the kids come from low-income households. Kaywin created an elective course about AI and also incorporated some AI tools in her computer science class. In my community, AI is huge in the workforce already. We see it out in the fields with the self-driving tractors. We see it in the air with the drones. We see it at the factories on the lines. We see it with the image recognition. So my students' parents are already using AI at work. This is just getting my students ready and familiar for the workforce that they're walking into. As valuable as AI can be in some areas of learning, there are growing concerns about the potential of these tools to worsen the already entrenched systemic inequalities in our education systems. Schools in the US are already grappling with race and class-based segregation, and they lack diverse teachers that represent the student population. Dr. Nicole Turner-Lee, director of the Center for Technology Innovation and co-editor-in-chief of Tech Tank at the Brookings Institution, believes that technology and AI won't make these issues go away. When the pandemic hit, 15 to 16 percent of our school-aged children did not have broadband at home, and 30 percent of those who were low income did not have a device. Not every child has access, and until we get every child online, that is not going to be a possibility for, for most. These tools are designed not necessarily with the cultural nuances of these students at hand. Language differences, how they interpret and analyze. These questions that we have dealt with when it came to uh, standardized testing are going to trickle into this debate. My point is, when you are at the lower part of the strata when it comes to opportunity, whether it's educational, financial, housing, you always lose. And we have to get in our mind that technology cannot displace the historic inequalities that we've actually developed and cultivated as a society. Create a lesson plan about persuasive essays. What we got here? Okay. Outside of student learning, AI could assist educators with their administrative and other non-teaching work, which currently takes up nearly half of their time. In the US, school teachers report the highest burnout rate among all industries nationwide, according to a 2022 Gallup poll. Job satisfaction is extremely low, 
In fact, in 2022, it was the lowest it has ever been in nearly 40 years. To add to that, there is a shortage of nearly 300,000 teachers and support staff across the US. And the pandemic made things much worse. I've been in education for over 30 years, and yes, the workload is a lot more than it ever has been. Uh, COVID did not do us any favors in that. The amount of technology that we have um, integrated, the tools that we're using, the administrative tasks that we've been asked to, the laws that we've been asked to address, the oversight, the um, all of the policies that we have to adhere to, all of this is overwhelming. We spoke to Hardeep Gulati, CEO of Power School, which serves 80% of North America's school districts through education technology that helps run different aspects of school operations. Power School recently announced the use of generative AI in two products involving student assessment and student outcomes. Well, today, if a teacher has to uh, really assign a homework or a lesson plan or quiz, typically they would start from the subject, the lesson plan, the mastery. And as you can imagine, if they want to really, you know, different kids might be at different levels of that uh, understanding those concepts. It's very difficult and it might take hours for teachers to create all those personalized learning pathways. With our AI tools embedded into Schoology, embedded into our student information system, embedded into our performance matters assessments, we are able to take that additional work from teachers and be able to generate that personalized learning pathway in a matter of minutes. Hardeep and other tech education specialists believe that AI will help push the classroom experience closer to one-on-one -on -one tutoring. Many consider this the gold standard in education, but unavailable to most due to lack of resources. However, others are sounding the alarm regarding the inherent biases and other issues that automation could cause. As we think about the evolution of these technologies, it's important that the people who are developing them bring more seats to the table. We need more educators, parents, even students at the table who are actually helping in the design and development of these technologies. Without their voices, we miss these opportunities to create educational technologies which are inclusive, that allow for flexibility and growth, and speak to the lived experiences of people. That's what education is about, and we cannot replace that simply because we're more efficient. Other concerns about the implementation of AI in schools are in regards to student data privacy and teacher displacement. Questions around what kind of data we collect about students, how we do it, and where we store it and whether it respects every student's human rights are critical. Faced with a severe shortage of certified teachers, some districts in the Mississippi Delta turned to online learning platforms, but it didn't go too well. Students struggled without qualified human teachers who cared about them. And in Indiana, nearly 2,000 students in six virtual charter schools earned zero credits in 2018. Deploying technology in educational settings is an area that we have to always keep two eyes open. It's very easy for schools to deploy new technologies in the hope that it's going to make their days much shorter and much more efficient and more productive. But it also can be a drawback to students who find themselves overly surveilled or profiled or targeted simply because the AI makes a determination. As with any new technology, we have to constantly interrogate these technologies 